If they want to start a school, they may not have the same management skill. They may not have that same, same compassion, same passion. All these differ. And the main is Allah's help. If Allah helps you, inshallah, it's possible. So one thing is that you can start a similar school, which many people have. But so far, we have in all these people who have started, as I told you, that close to about 5%, 6% of what I would consider. We also have franchise. But the requirement for franchise is very difficult, very strict. We require land, we require all, everything. It should be funded by the local people. The thing should be funded by the local people. Our criteria are very strict. If we want any part anywhere else in India, we want minimum four acre land. If it's on the suburbs of, of the city, two acre. If it's in the heart of the city, we require half the construction cost, everything else we'll do. Various rules and regulations. In spite of that, we have got hundreds of offers. We first thought we will open one school every year, but then we decided that it's difficult. Because once we started the school, we realized to manage was so difficult. We had to fly in and out from Bombay to Chennai. We send our teachers for training. We send our counselors, everything. So we, we, we realized that it's possible, but it's difficult. So therefore, we said that every two, three years we start. We have plans next time to start in Dubai, inshallah. There have been offers in Dubai where people said that we will give you land. There are people even in UK who have told us. There was a person in Manchester who told, you, told me I can give you five-acre land. We haven't taken the offer yet. We scrutinize the person offering and everything. And if we feel it's feasible, it's not a commercial venture. Point number one, the person donating that land, we say you give it and forget it. Don't think of getting a return. In the Western countries, everyone is thinking, if I invest 1,000 pounds, how much will I get? See, wherever I go, it's only in the Western countries, in USA, Canada, and, U and UK, where there's tickets. There is nothing the concept of ticket for talk. How can I have a ticket for Islamic talk? So there's no concept of getting tickets. People call me, they say, Dr. Zakir Naik, how much will you charge to come? I mean, they cannot afford me, believe me. If I have to tell my fees, they can't afford me. Mashallah, I'm, I mean, I come here free. Maximum you can pay my ticket. My crew, everything has come absolutely, Mashallah. It's all paid by us. Fine. Simple accommodation if you can. If not, we manage it, no problem. My time is more important. So this concept is different. There, there in the eastern part of the world, mashallah, is different. So what we do, it is not a commercial venture. So anyone interested, if he gives, he has to forget it. He gives something for the land, he puts school, we control it. If we have a franchise, we have full control. We also tell in Bombay, the, in India, the person who donated, he donated a land, someone donated a land which cost about 16 crore rupees. I don't know, it will be how much? Some, maybe some million pounds worth of land. But we told him, no guarantee that your child will be admitted. You can give the land, you can start the school, but no guarantee if your child passes, he'll get admission. There have been cases that people have given us maybe a million dollar donation. One of the child was refused. I'm very strict. So our conditions are very absolutely transparent. So if such conditions there, we scrutinize the person who's doing. When we have a franchise, we see to it that once the name is attached, if IRF name is attached, finish. We see to it that we keep up to our name. Therefore, we don't, as a policy, when we go anywhere else, we tell them, don't put our name. We will come, but don't put my name. Don't put my name as organizer. The moment you put the name as organizer, that means there's surely going to be problem for us. So when we go and support any other organization for any function, we support a lot, mashallah. But the only criteria of ours is, we'll help you, but don't put our name. Because we know we don't have 100% control. Even 50% control, we don't agree. 90% also we don't agree. Unless we have 100% control, we don't agree putting our name as organizers or sub-organizers. The name comes, that means, so if someone, there are offers, mashallah, from different parts of the world for us to start such schools. Once we start, the, and one thing, when the name is attached, inshallah, we are going to start in Dubai, we will keep the fees more than the British schools and the American schools, inshallah. We'll compete with them. We'll keep higher fees than them. There are people who can afford when Allah has given them. Those who can't afford, we'll give 25% people, we'll give scholarship. So in Dubai, inshallah, is our next target, where the fees, there's quite high of the British schools and American schools. But inshallah, we have plans to keep fees higher than them. And inshallah, there'll be more people flocking to our school, inshallah, with Allah's help. And main thing is the quality. For other people, you can start in your own capacity. 
what do you have? I know that here, Masha, the government funds schools also. But we don't, we don't normally take funding from the government because there's too much of interference. Not a single penny. Here, I don't know if you can take and run the school that way, the way, the way we are running, no problem. Or you start on your own. Start on your own, small way, whatever way you can. Whatever ability you have got, start and make a beginning. Whatever you can do, at least catch the surface, inshallah. And inshallah, Allah will help you and you will, inshallah, be successful. Hope that answers the question. Now we have the next question from the sister. Sister asked the question, the non-Muslim sister, that there are some verses of the Quran which are abrogating or contradicting. It's cancelled. So does it mean that how can there be a contradiction? If you read the Quran, there is, there is, there are no two verses in the Quran which contradict. I challenge anyone to point out any two verses in the Quran which contradict. Allah says clearly in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter number four, verse number eighty-two. Allah says, "Afala yatadabbarun al Quran, walau kana min indi ghar illa lavajadu fiktilafan kasira." Do they not consider the Quran with care? Had it been from anyone besides Allah, there would have been many contradictions. Now, in the Muslim Ummah, I'm aware there is a concept of abrogation, theory of abrogation, known as Mansuk and Nask, based on the verse of the Quran of Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 106, and Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse 101, which says that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not cause any of his ayats, any of his signs to be forgotten. He substitutes it with something better or similar. Now, based on this verse, there are many scholars who have propounded the theory of abrogation. Nask and Mansuk. People will say, what is Dr. Zakhani talking about? No, that no verse is contradict. The Quran says the verse will not contradict. It will not contradict. Any scholar says anything, I'm not bothered. Allah is the highest, number one. Now, if you read the verse of the Quran, you can, you can analyze the verse of the Quran in two ways. One way is that the ayahs talking in the Quran are referring to the earlier scriptures. Maybe Torah, maybe Injil. So Allah says, I do not cause any of the ayahs, the signs of Allah, the previous verses of the previous revelation to be forgotten, but substituted with something better or similar. Something better and similar is the Quran. Now, if you agree that the ayahs mentioned in the verse is ayahs of the Quran, then too I have an answer. It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed one verse of the Quran what was relevant for that time and after that he revealed another verse but that verse is not contradicting it is giving more information and the two verses given by the sister of Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 15 and Surah Nur chapter number 24 verse number 2 though she hasn't mentioned the translation and by Allah's grace I know the translation of these verses not the Mahafuzul Quran this is all training it's not Mahafuzul Quran it is practice that I know what questions are going to come to me so we know the verses, mashallah. It's very easy, it's not difficult. You tell the verses, and even our children, mashallah, do the same. Alhamdulillah. Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 15 says that if anyone is caught in fornication, if any woman is caught in fornication, then keep her in custody in house arrest like. Seclude her until she dies or Allah ordained something else. And then Surah Nur chapter number 24, verse number 2 says that as for the fornicator, person who commits fornication, give them punishment of 100 lashes. Now people will think, is there a contradiction? If the first Quranic verse of Surah Nisa chapter 4, 15 had said that put the woman in house arrest and a full stop, then Surah Nur of 100 lashes would contradict. It says that keep them in house until they die or until Allah gives something else. Now for this, Allah has given two options. 